Okay, hi everyone, welcome to a brand new video. So in this video, we're going to be further explaining the Firebase real-time database sort of queries that we submit through Python, so using the Firebase library. So if you know my channel, you know that I have a lot of videos using the Firebase library. However, if it's your first time here, no worries because you can definitely still watch this video. So what we're going to do is that we're going to take some SQL statements, apply them on a SQL database or on a relational database using SQL Lite, and then we're going to apply the sort of equivalent queries with the Firebase real-time database through the Firebase library on this data right here. Now, before we get started, one important thing that you have to note is the following, that the Firebase real-time database is actually a NoSQL database. Now, if you don't know what NoSQL is, I have a video on it explaining the entire concept within five minutes. So definitely check that out if you're interested and if you feel that that would give you more context for this video. So because Firebase is NoSQL, there is definitely a sort of difference in the way that we structure the data. However, this is not what this video is about. This video is going to go deeper into the queries. So for the sake of comparison, I've chosen to insert this data into Firebase in a sort of more normalized manner. Now, I'll get into that later, so don't let that scare you. And then let's just get started. And I'll start by simply explaining what we have at hand first. So like I said, I put in the same data in both the Firebase real-time database as well as the SQLite database that I created. So for this tutorial, I'm using SQLite because it is kind of light and easy to use. And uh, however, this also applies to any sort of different relational database like MySQL, for example, or Microsoft SQL Server. So here, this is our SQLite database. Now, this is a table. Our database contains one table. So this is a very sort of simplistic approach because here I'm just trying to sort of illustrate the way these different statements could be equivalent. Obviously, there is no equivalent statement to those where we sort of query the SQL database for relations between tables and then sort of get information from both tables. Because in this case, like I said, Firebase is a no SQL database. We don't really have tables as well as relations between them. All right, so just disregard that now if you want to keep that in mind and let's just get started. So this is our data. So here I have seven different users. So here, the root node in this case is users, and I have seven different users. Each user object is represented by an ID. So if I minimize this, there is an ID that is sort of representative or it's the parent node of the information within this user object. Now, this user object here, in my case, I allowed all of them to have the sort of same key value pairs, so the same field names, you could say. So we have first name, last name, occupation, employed, and age. However, like I said, this is a no SQL database, meaning these could have any sort of name in each different user, and there is no normalization to it, but I chose to have a normalized sort of database. So here for each user, we have a first name, last name, age, employed, where, where it's a Boolean that checks whether or not this person is employed, and we say what their occupation is. Now this exists for all of these seven users. Now the exact same data I've created inside this SQL table, in this table called users, where we have first name, last name, age, employed, occupation, so the same exact fields and the same exact data so that we can compare the queries and show that they have the exact same results. All right, so now let's just get started with the code and I'll explain everything in detail as we get there. So this is a PyCharm project that I've initialized with some sort of starter code. Now I'm just going to go through every single step of these and then explain what is needed and refer you to something else in case something is way too ambiguous for a beginner. Now here, one thing that we have to do is import both Firebase and SQLite 3. I believe SQLite 3 does not need to be installed. However, um, you can check, you can double check on that. Now for Pyrobase, it is best to install Pyrobase 4, the Pyrobase 4 library. So we do so using pip. So if you go to the terminal of our PyCharm project or just your random, your regular terminal on your PC, you can simply type pip install Pyrobase 4. Now the reason that is, is that the original Pyrobase has some errors with the queries and now we choose to switch to Pyrobase 4. However, the code syntax is exactly the same and we still tend to import Pyrobase rather than type Pyrobase 4. So now let's just keep that in mind. 
Now here it says requirement already satisfied because I already have Pyrase installed on my machine and in my environment. But in your case, where this is your first time maybe using it, your first time installing it in this virtual environment, you can go ahead and install it from here and you'll wait a couple minutes for the library to be installed. So this is Pyrase. Now here I initialized Firebase, I do so by adding an app. Now if you don't know exactly the process that it takes to get here, so the process where we go from the Firebase console, creating a project, adding an app, I highly suggest you refer to one of my previous videos, at least watch the first few minutes so you can see exactly how the project is created. You can refer, and I suggest that you do if this is completely new to you, to my first video in a playlist, so you don't need to watch the entire playlist if you don't want to. But I think you should refer to the create data in the Pyrobase CRUD series for real-time database where you'll, where, where you'll learn how to set up this entire project as well as add this data into the database. So you can feel sort of caught up with this video. But that's just a suggestion. Anyways, going back, so we initialize the Firebase app by doing the following. And then we call db, which is equal to firebase.database. So this is the client for the database. Now, on the other hand, for SQLite, so we create a connection called con or connection, doesn't really matter, to users.db. Now, users.db, we save it inside of this project. So we save it right here. By saving it, you, you change to the directory required for the project and you save it there. So I connect to users.db and I create a cursor. And this is what I'll use to be able to query from this database. Now, here we, we get to the querying part. Now, obviously, these are not any, let's say, full queries. They're just some standards, but just for me to illustrate how we actually query both the Firebase real-time database with Pyrobase as well as querying SQLite with Python. So, in the first case, here I'm printing real-time database results, and I'm saving the result of db.child.users.get in this result variable. So let's just explain this real quick, although I feel like maybe you would have a background in this. If not, no worries. So to explain this, here we're seeing that db, so our root database right here, so db, has a child. And this child is users, which is technically true because our db here is SQL versus Firebase tutorial has a child users. And this is the sort of root node for everything. And we want to get the results from it. So here, when I say get without anything else, I'm simply stating that I want all the children of this user's node. And then four results in result.each. So each is basically a sort of function that enables us to iterate over these results that we get from this query. We print the result.value. So by doing so, here we print all the results from this sort of query right here. Now, obviously, this is not a complex query. There are no filtering, no matching operations. We're simply extracting all of the possible users in the database. And you'll see that as I run it in a minute. Now, here in the second case, for the SQLite database, I have, I print, this is SQLite results so that I can separate them. Then I create an SQL string. So this is the string that I will, that will house my SQL query. And now I want to select star from users. So if you're familiar with SQL, you know that here I'm saying that I want to select all the possible rows from the table called users. And by doing so, by iterating over cursor.execute this string, I am able to print all the results. So if I run this right now, I can compare what I receive. So here's what we have. So for the real-time DB results, I get all the users in a sort of Python hash table or a dict. And these are the users that I have. And in the second case, I have the SQLite results, and they come here in this sort of syntax that illustrates the different rows within an SQLite table or this table in this relational database. So this is what we have. So we queried and asked for all the rows or all the users within these two databases and we received both of them. Now let's just get started with some basic filtering. Now to filter with this Firebase library, we need, to do, we need to use a special kind of function. So let me just erase get, but we'll add it at the end in all cases. So this function is called order by child. And here, using this order by child function, I have to state a sort of field name that I want to be ordering by, or I want to be applying these conditions to. So here, if I want to say that I want all the users who have a last name of Smith. So here I have one, and I have another right here. So two users. I want to say order by child last name, so I'm stating which field I'm ordering by, and then I say dot equal to, and I say Smith. And by doing so, I'm saying that I want 
all the users who have the field name of last name to have a value of Smith. Now for SQL Lite, obviously this is a very simple SQL statement. So where last name is equal to, so let's just escape the quotations and this is what we have. So where last name is equal to Smith. Now if I run this, this is the result. The result here would be that I get these two different users where I have John Smith as well as Mary Smith and I get the exact same results from the SQL Lite table. Now this is the sort of equivalent query in this case. So whenever you're checking for equivalence, you have to use the order by child, specify the field name, and then use the equal to operator. And by doing so, you're able to sort of format the same equivalent query to the following right here. Next up to deal with numbers. So for the age, so here we have an integer and the age is, has an integer type. So here in the table as well, it has an integer type. So what I want for the age is that I want the age where age, um, okay, is equal to, let's say, 40. All right. And now I want the exact same thing in the first case. So the way I do this is here, I'm querying on the age field. So I say order by child age. And here I just specify 40. So it's sort of the same thing. We're still doing this matching type of operator. We're using the equal to function. Now in this case, make sure not to put the following. So do not put 40 within quotation marks because this will just signal that this is a string and we actually want an int because we actually stored it as an int. Now, if we run this, we get the same results. So John Smith has an age of 40 and this is what he is. And this we get the same result between the real-time database and the SQLite results. Now, for different types of operators on numbers, we can say maybe um, greater than 40 and we can just say the same thing here. So starts at 40. So starts at is the function for sort of greater than. Um, I'm sorry, so start at. And this is what we have. So here's what we have. The one important thing to note is that start at actually refers to greater than or equal. So here this would be more accurate, I guess. And then if we run this, we should get the same result by getting four different types of users. You can also have the end at. So if you have and age is less than or equal to maybe 50 or let's say 48 we can have here dot end at and i say 48 dot get and then i run this and get the exact same results so here we're getting these three different types of users or people and this is sort of how we do things so we learned how to use the equal to we learned how to use the sort of start at and end at and this is what we're going to do to be able to filter these different um, type of filter these, these different users and return the users that we want. So this is how I'm illustrating these equivalent queries on the exact same data with both SQL and the Firebase real-time database queries. So we already covered equivalence and how to check whether a certain integer is between different values. Another thing we want to cover is how to limit the values and how to order them. So let's say I want to order it by age. So now. So here, if in SQL, I say order by age, I can order by age and I want the top three. So limit three. Now in this part, so in the Firebase real-time database part, I still use the order by child age and then I can say limit to first three. And by doing so, I'm taking the top three results. Now, if I run it and perform these queries, here's what I get. So I get Jane Doe, I get Mary Smith, and I get Mark Johnson, which are the exact same results. So they have the, in ascending order, the age. So that's basically it for these queries. Now, I hope this was useful. I hope you were better able to understand these Pyrobase queries for the real-time database by using the SQL comparisons and sort of be able to highlight the, both the similarities and differences between the two. So thank you very much for watching. I hope it was useful and bye-bye.